This is very exciting to be here. Everybody's all dressed up and all the men are in tuxedos, which uh, everybody always jokes about men in tuxedos, they look like penguins. And uh, I love animals, I love all types of animals. And uh, I guess the reason I do is because uh, our family business, when I was uh, growing up, we had a petting zoo. And uh, uh, well, we had two sections. We had a petting zoo and then we had a, a heavy petting zoo, people who really liked the animals a lot. That was just right over there, just there. It's more expensive, but... Um, this is my new song of the year, um, Draw the Line by Victoria Jackson. Talk about love, talk about morality. Have you heard it before? <laughs> well, Willie Nelson sings his over and over and over. So. <clears throat> talk about love, talk about morality. Are we having an affair or are you just glad to see me when we kiss goodnight? Is a kiss time by the minute? If the minute's too long, does a sweet little kiss have the devil in it? If we whisper low, things no one else can hear. Will my husband know? Will he think my vows were insincere? Where do you draw the line between love and adultery? If you're a friend of mine, can I hold your hand? Where do you draw the line? Tickle your ear this way Or if I lick the lint out of your navel With my tongue Will the neighbors talk? Will they misconstrue? And think that you are not just my best friend But that I am in love with you <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> Where he draw the line? Do you think it's okay? If our clothes accidentally fall off when you come over to be comforted Because a family member died Or what if the doctor said I had a terrible disease And the only way to cure it would be to take a shower with you naked Where do you draw the line? 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 Hi, I'm Whoopi Goldberg You know, when I was a kid, television was my window to the world. And because of it, I was lucky enough to see a performer who you may or may not remember. I thought of her as one of the funniest women in the world. Her name was Moms Mabler. And the thing I remember most was the fact that I had never seen anyone talk without teeth before. Good evening, honey. Not, 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 just don't get all carried away. Did you hear the one about the two women who was walking down the street? One turned to the other one and said, I smell hair burning. The other one said, maybe we're walking too fast. <laughs> yeah, Tony. And don't you know the sensor lady just dropped her drawers? <laughs> and did you hear the one about, about the woman who was in the hospital dying? Her husband come to the hospital, honey, she wanted to make a confession to him, you know? So he went over to the hospital just to cry. She said, honey, I'm dying. He said, yes, I know. She said, but I got a confession to make to you before I go. She said, I ain't been true to you. He said, yes, I know. She said, but I've been running around with other men, fooling around. He said, yes, I know. That's why I poisoned you. Well, everybody's crazy nowadays, huh? I mean, you, did you ever see anybody acting normal? It's probably because they just say, well, you know, not like the good old days, honey. I know about the good old days, yes. But I wasn't nothing but a child. A child, 14 going on 15, honey. And just as cute as I want to be. <laughs> yes, honey. Hair just hanging down my back, you know, because I'm half Indian. The beauty parlor take care of the other half, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> 
And my father made me marry this old, dead, puny, moldy man. I mean, he was an old man, honey. Santa Claus looked like his son. He was older than his mother. I'm telling you, that man was so old that when we went to his sister's funeral, after the funeral, the minister come walking over to him, tapped him on the back and said, how old are you, Pops? Pops said, nine to one. Minister said, ain't no use in you even going home. <laughs> yes, honey, I thought he never would die. Yes, I thought he never would die. You know, that poison agreed with him. I shouldn't talk that way about the dead, should I? No. Cause they tell you, you mustn't say nothing about the dead unless you could say something good. He dead, good. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I know he dead, cause I had him cremated. Yeah, so they burned him up. I was determined he was gonna get hot one time anyway. Yeah, that's why I don't like no old man. Cause there ain't nothing that an old man can do for me except bring me a message from a young man. Thank you very, very much, and what a thrill it is for me tonight to see so many women getting comedy awards. Ha <laughs> ha, yes, it's the greatest. You see, when I started out as a stand-up comic, women were just the butt of jokes, usually portrayed by bimbets, whose IQ was just a little bit higher than their bust size. <laughs> but we were allowed to do commercials on television where we presented mysterious solutions for mysterious maladies in mysterious places. <laughs> Most women on television were not allowed to mention, let alone acknowledge the possession of a vital organ, any vital organ, between the neck and the kneecap. <laughs> Whatever was there either itched, ached, or throbbed. <laughs> and it had to be shaved, shampooed, or shrunk. <laughs> but now, today, women in comedy are at least of equal importance. And fortunately, oh, how nice. <laughs> and now, we even have signs of intelligent life in comedy. And one of the big reasons is my brilliant friend, Lily Tomlin. Every comedian starting out walks into an audition with high hopes, uh, a racing pulse, and a piece of material. Uh, this is the piece of material I used when I got my job on Laugh-In. Uh, so it goes back uh, a few years. Um, your response is appreciated. <laughs> this, this, uh, this piece is about a woman who has a problem um, and many of us have similar problems. I think you know if you, you, I think you know you have this problem if when you're leaving a party you overhear someone say, did she have a purse? <laughs> My name is Lucille W. I'm a rubber freak. <laughs> it's all right, I can talk about it now. Of course, when there was, there was a time when I couldn't. When I look back on it, I think it all started with rubber bands. I wasn't actually swallowing them in those days, I just sort of munched on them. <laughs> Sometimes I'd take one and stretch it from one eye tooth to the other, sort of twang on it. <laughs> then one day I sat down to write a lyric for one especially good tune I'd twanged. I must have blacked out. Cause when I came to, I realized I'd eaten the eraser off my pencil. Wasn't no time at all, I was up to 20 pencils a day. All my friends, my relatives, they started saying, Lucille, don't you think you've had enough? <laughs> I thought I could handle it, I really did. I thought I could quit any time I wanted. Instead, I became a secret eraser eater. I started to take all my household money and spend it on art gum. I just couldn't seem to get enough. I was putting on weight. One day my husband came home early. I was just finishing off a typewriter eraser. <laughs> he caught me. 
with the brush sticking out of my mouth. <laughs> that was the first lie. I told him I was chewing on my eyelashes. From then on, it was just straight downhill all the way. I went right on the heavy stuff. Things started to disappear around the house. Oh, at first I was careful, you know, door stops. Backs off the shag rugs. Tip off mother's cane. Sometimes I'd be playing cards with the girls. I don't know what would come over me. I'd just jump up, run into the kitchen, and eat a spatula. <laughs> Pretty soon, though, I just didn't seem to care anymore. The garden hose went. <laughs> On rainy days, I started to hang out around grade school cloakrooms. It was the court psychiatrist, God love him, he saved my life, he really did. He told him, this woman is no criminal, She's, she needs help. I was down on my hands and knees thanking that man. I ate his crepe soles. <laughs> well, it's been a long, hard battle back, but I'm well now. Of course, just to remind myself, I still keep a snow tire in the closet. <laughs> But thanks to medical technology, major breakthroughs in psychiatric care, I'm no longer a woman obsessed with an unnatural craving. I'm just another normal, socially acceptable drunk. Now this is a joke. I mean, this is a comedy show and this is just kind of a put on. We'll put the old broad on and let's see, you know, we'll, then we'll take it away from her and laugh. Well, I must say, the first time for anything is so marvelous. I'm... <laughs> I remember. I am genuinely and deeply thrilled, but two other ladies deserve it just every bit as much, and we'll all share it. Thank you so very much. And Estelle and Beezy, thank you. It's amazing in nature how everything works together. Everything seems to be here to help each other, to be here for a specific purpose, uh, except for fleas. To me, I, fleas, I have no, I, they have no beneficial reason at all to be here. And I always thought at times like this, when we can't figure things out for ourselves, wouldn't it be great if we could just pick up the phone and call up God and ask him these things? Just, just pick up the phone and call up God and... Yeah, hi, God, it's Ellen. Ellen. Degenerous. Degenerous. What, what's so funny? <laughs> no, I never thought of that. It does sound like that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, listen, if you weren't too busy, I, sure, I'll hold on. <laughs> Somebody's at the gate. <laughs> Onward, Christian soul. Yeah, just sing along your tape. <laughs> yeah, it's not a tape. Well, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, listen, God, there are certain things on this earth I just don't understand why they're here. No, not Charo. No, I didn't mean... <laughs> no. I was thinking more of insects. I, no, bees are great. The honey. That was clever. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, no, I was thinking more about um, fleas. Fleas have no beneficial reason at all to... Mm hmm No, I didn't realize how many people were employed by the flea collar industry. Not, not to mention sprays. Well, I guess you're right. <laughs> of course you are. Of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> Being who you are. Yeah. Oh, you got a little cold. God bless you. God bless yourself. <laughs> you just, just bless yourself, couldn't you? <laughs> Still doing that comedy. Uh-huh. Yeah. You got a joke for me. Great. Yeah. yeah. No, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. No, I got time. Of course, you know that more than me, huh? <laughs> yeah. That was a joke. Go ahead. Who's there? God who? Got a dime. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have time for another one. I just remembered an appointment I have to get to, so I gotta go. How about that? God who? Gotta go. Cute. Stupid. All righty. Okay. Yeah. It was good talking to you, too. And I'll see, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> All right, bye-bye.
Thanks very much. Thank you. You know, Madeline, I am really thrilled that you're here. I mean, we've never had a chance to work together, and it's a pleasure. It is? Yes. Is it really? Yes. Well, my goodness, Betty, coming from you, that's really a compliment. Oh. I mean, after all, you've had a chance to work with some of the best partners. You've had Mary Tyler Moore and Cloris Leachman, and now you have B. Arthur, Rue McClanahan, Escal Getty. I mean, they would seem to have been extremely pleasant partners. Well, you too, you've worked with Mel Brooks, George C. Scott. Yes, yes, I have. Oh. And, um, well, anyway, now that we're here together, Betty, um, you never know what might happen. Perhaps we will become one of those legendary teams ourselves. goes into comedy today walks through the doors that were opened by and I would like to personally thank Miss Joan Rivers. Uh, tonight uh, they asked me to fly in from New York at my own expense. Uh, <laughs> 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 to talk about uh, what it's like to be a stand-up comic. And I was very pleased. And then I found out I was their second choice. They had originally asked Dan Quayle. But um, <laughs> being a stand-up is very, very difficult. It, I'm, I'm in the business 22 years, and already I'm shaking, you know what I mean? There are nights that everything works. You come out, and for some reason, they like you, and you like them, and it's a party. And you walk off, and you say, why are they paying me? And there are some nights that no matter what you do, nothing works. Nothing works. You, you can kill yourself out there. The same joke that you just did last night, they loved, they all go, yeah, right. And um, I mean, I once had a monk break a 20 year vow of silence to go, you know, up in front. And um, people have asked me, 
why do people continue to do stand-up comedy? I always say that by doing stand-up, and this is really true, um, you're able to point out the endearing foibles of human nature to everybody. You're able to make the world a happier place through comedy. And mainly, you hope you'll be spotted for a TV show and you get out of the business once and for all.